It is October 1st. That means Inktober, people. I've got this comic here, and we're going to be inking this thing up in Affinity Designer. This comic is about a YouTuber who raises badgers in his free time. And not the tea-sipping kind of badgers that are really friendly. I'm talking about the aggressive badgers. Your neighbor's chicken's in your yard? Send a badger after him. You got a cow problem? Two badgers. You want to chase off some foxes? You need a lot of badgers. All in all, it's a really solid business model. So that explains the badgers. What about affinity designer? And in general, why are we drawing in vectors? There are a lot of benefits to vector illustration. One is that you can scale up all of the elements in your drawing without any loss in quality. It also lets me modify my illustration in a lot of different ways after I've drawn it in, in ways that I couldn't in a traditional painting app. I can change my stroke style, my line width, my colors. It's very easy to do all of that after the drawing is complete. So I have my comic penciled already. I've already gotten it into my iPad. I'm going to be focusing on this middle panel today. It's the most detailed panel. And it also gives us the opportunity to talk about the foreground and background elements and how you can use ink to clear up your comic and help tell the story. But before we jump into drawing that panel, let's take a look at the panel before it. This panel here shows that there is a box with a badger in it. It is ready to ship and the badger is not happy. In this panel, I want to show that the business ships a lot of badgers. Having a lot of boxes in the background and in the foreground definitely gets that across, but it can be hard to see what we're supposed to be focusing on if we just look at the illustration the way it is now. There are a couple things we can do to make this more readable. Right now, all of the lines are the same weight. They are the same width. So we can make the foreground lines thicker and the background lines thinner. That definitely helps. It also helps that the primary box is even thicker than the foreground elements. It gives the reader more to focus on. It's still not quite there yet. I want it to pop more, so I can add an ink wash to the background, leaving the foreground box white, so there's no doubt where you're supposed to focus now. This isn't the only way to draw focus in an illustration, but that's the way that I've chosen to focus on it today in our comic. Trust me, there are a lot of different ways to skin a badger. <laughs> Kidding. Now I'm using the iPad version of Affinity Designer. You can definitely use the desktop version of Affinity Designer to do anything that I'm doing here. And also I should point out this tutorial isn't meant to teach you everything you need to know about Affinity Designer. If you're new to the program, I have some courses and there's actually discount codes. Don't pay full price. You can find links to those down below in the description. That is French for description. Okay, so with those ideas in mind, let's take another look at that sketch. What happens in this panel is that the mail delivery guy is refusing to deliver the bag Badgers, he claims it's against policy to be shipping live animals. If they know that there is an animal in the box, they're not gonna ship it. Our intrepid YouTuber has failed to keep this under wraps, and our badger has made his presence known, which is making everybody's life a little bit harder. In Affinity Designer, I am using the brush tool. You can draw on the screen, and it leaves a line. Revolutionary, I know. Now, at this step, you might want to choose from the plethora of brushes that are available to you in Affinity Designer. Those are all along the right-hand side. I'm not gonna do that, at least not yet. What I want to do is I want to get all of my ink lines down before I start to worry about the style of my lines. But before even doing that, I'm going to separate all my elements in the drawing into different layers. Each character is going to be on their own separate layers. Each part of the background is going to be on its own separate layer. By separating out my artwork onto layers, I make it so much easier to modify later on. So to start with, I'm going to draw my three main characters on my three different layers. And all of those lines right now are the same weight, no variance in brush strokes. I'm I'm gonna add that kind of variance and detail later. What? The timeout chair. JD Furnuckles, 1986, writes, Brad, this is a stupid way to do this. Why don't you just use the brush pressure sensitivity to make the lines the way you want them in the first place? Thanks for the question, JD Furnuckles, 1986. You can definitely do this. When you select the brush, you get a nice contextual menu along the bottom of the screen. There's a selection there called controller. If you select pressure, as you apply more pressure with your stylus, you're gonna get a thicker or a darker line as you draw. And the reason I'm not doing this is because it slows me down. I would spend all my time fiddling with each and every line. I'd rather get the lines down first and then fiddle with them so I know which ones are important to me, which ones are gonna make the drawing better. I know my propensity for fiddling, and given the time, I'll spend five minutes making every single line on a shoe perfect only to find out you can't tell once you zoom out. Disclaimer, this is not the only way to do it. Everybody's gonna do it a little bit differently and so you should do you. Can I leave the timeout chair now? So my characters are roughed out now. Now I'm gonna look at the other background elements. I'm not going to add a lot of hatch lines at this point. That comes next. Right now, I'm just adding the essential detail lines of the background. Then once I get that done on their own layer, 
I draw a million different hatch lines onto the background. My goal here is to darken out the edges. The more detail I add, the more of those details kind of fade into the background. It's hard to tell what to focus on, which is exactly what I want, because I want to have more white space around my central characters in the middle of that panel where the action is happening. Cool, all my main lines are in place and they are looking good. What do you think? Now we can get to all of those details we've been talking about. First, let's review what we can do in Affinity Designer. I'm gonna be selecting this line and then on the left-hand side, I'm gonna open up my brushes. One of the great things about Affinity Designer is that we can change the style of anything that we laid down after the fact. And we're not just limited to pens. We have chalks, pastels, acrylics. You get the idea, it's all pretty cool. I'm gonna stay on the boring side of things with pens for now. I'm gonna change this line to solid pen with pressure. Then I'm gonna to go to my stroke palette along the right hand side and you see this little curve area we can use this to adjust the pressure of our lines after we've drawn them if we pull the sides of the curve down it tapers the sides of the line if we pull the middle of the curve down it makes the middle of the line thinner so my next step is to go into my characters and adjust all of their lines now I've made the outlines of these characters thicker and darker so that they appear but the inside of the characters I'm keeping those lines thinner I'm also also going into a lot of those lines and tapering them off at the edges when I need to. For example, this line underneath the beaver's neck, I wanted to taper that in. If that stayed thick all the way through, it would look too blocky and wrong. I find that tapering things is much more important on my thicker lines than it is on some of my more detailed thin lines, like the lines I've used in the background. So that's how I ink. I really like the way this turned out, especially after I finished all of that ink, I added a little bit of ink wash to darken up the sides and really help you focus in on that middle ground. I think it helped it pop. Thanks for watching and I really look forward to seeing what you create this inktober.